Hi. So I have everybody on mute just so that it's not crazy. Can everybody hear me? Thumbs up. Awesome. Is everybody doing okay? Everybody's healthy? Hanging in there? Yes. I'm so happy to hear that. It's been challenging for sure for all of us. This is a little bit of a new normal. So I wanted to make sure that everybody was healthy and doing okay and their family's doing well. Um, so I think what I'll do is allow everybody to speak and say, hey, can you hear me? Hey, Chris, can you hear me? Hey. Hey. Camille, <laughs> you want to say hi? Hello. Hi. Where are you guys located? Um, California, San Clemente. Nice. Thanks for coming. Is here. it raining up there? Yeah. It was really muddy this morning. Hi, Samantha. Hi. Samantha's come to the ranch before, so she has adopted one of our chickens named Henrietta. You can check her out on uh, the Instagram page. She's the big buff Orpington hen. She's a lot of fun. And she's been laying a lot of eggs, by the way. <laughs> yes, the hens have been busy. It's springtime at the ranch and everybody is just bursting at the seams. They're all laying a ton of eggs. They're talking and rooting around in the dirt. Today I went over to clean up and it was so muddy because they still got out and they were having a good time. The ducks are loving it because they love to be muddy. So let's see who else is popping on here. <clears throat> okay, so do you guys, um, are, you, are you breathing? Is everybody breathing and staying calm during this time? Yeah. Today I was looking at Peace. He's been coming out, our peacock, He's been coming out of the chicken coop every morning and doing his fan. His, pe his feathers go out. Oh. He vibrates. He does this whole dance. He's completely um, energized because it's spring. But yesterday I was thinking to myself that he's really given me um, the opportunity to take a pause and kind of remember to take a deep breath each day. And as I watch him and he just kind of struts in his little way, I... I'm conscious of taking a deep breath and maintaining like my peace, my inner peace. So I thought that that would be like an underlying message that we would kind of um, talk about because it's crazy right now and we need to, you know, have a focus of somehow maintaining a little bit of peace. So every day, if you guys can get out and see some birds, it'll lower your stress level. Being out in nature, even if it's just for five minutes, is really something that's good for us um, and just can center us all. So even if it's raining, you could take a peek outside the window and see if you can spot a bird or just watch them for a few minutes and it'll give you a focus and lower your stress level. Yeah, like um, there's like, there's birds like on the rooftops and chimneys that we see out our window like every day. So I saw them like while it was raining today. Oh, that's awesome. Were they little birds? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have birds by you guys, Camille? Uh, yeah. We have a lot of hummingbirds in our backyard. Aren't they amazing how they can swoop down and they like almost like bomb you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My neighbors have a bunch of um, hummingbird feeders. And so in the evening time, I literally, if I open the door, I have to duck because they're so active and it's crazy. <laughs> So yes, so today I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Um, this is my first Zoom meeting, so bear with me because I'm obviously a newbie on this, but um, I wanna share this presentation I have for you guys. And can everybody see that? Mm, no, not yet. Not yet? Okay, let's see. What? Share screen again. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. There. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me go back one. <clears throat> so Peace is our Indian peacock. He's um, looks mm. very similar to this. This is not his actual picture, but it's something that looks really similar. He's an um, East Indian peacock, and he has the, the bright uh, indigo blue neck. There are a couple of other really popular and common peacocks in the world. The other one is a green peacock, and those look really similar to Peace, except that the neck is an emerald green. 
So, um, and then there's a smaller one called a Congo peacock, and those are found in um, Africa, and they're smaller, more compact, um, not as radiant in the coloration, but similar in they, they have the tail feathers that fan out with the eyes and everything. So it's really interesting. There are so many. We even have all white peacocks. So when I started looking, I was amazed at how many different um, varieties there are. But um, Peace has been at the ranch for probably about four years. I'm not sure. Leo, our caretaker, our ranch caretaker, said that a friend of his um, brought him to the ranch. And um, so I'm not sure exactly his age. Um, but he's got a full uh, tail covering now. That, and each year they are going to get more vivid and more uh, full because as peacocks age, they actually get larger and more plume. So that's an interesting fact. You get to be, you get to grow more beautifully as you age at, when you're a peacock. Hmm. So um, just remember when you see your birds, whether it's a little wild bird outside the house or whether you're watching peace next time you come out to the ranch, it'll give us a reminder to take a deep breath and breathe and stay centered and calm through whatever our days are going to bring us. And um, you guys can obviously look up more stuff on peacocks as we go. So the classification of peacocks, they're a galliform, and which is a game bird. They're a heavy bodied ground feeding bird. Um, these types of birds are also turkeys, chickens, quail, partridges, and pheasants. And there are over 290 species found on every continent, living in forests and farmlands, rainforest and bushlands. Um, the only place that you won't find peacocks are in the really inner deserts that are extremely hot or um, ice caps. So they can't stand those harsh climates, but pretty much everywhere else they are, um, they've been brought over and are inhabiting those areas. So like so, peacocks, peacocks can like, wild peacocks can be like here in California? Yes. In fact, when there are quite a few over in Malibu and they tend to roost up high in the trees and some of the neighbors don't really like them because they can be really loud. Um, at the end of this presentation, I have a recording of what they sound like. So if you've never heard one in real life, you can um, hear what they sound like. They sort of have a couple of different things. One of them is like a honk and it's pretty loud. It's like honk. And then when they are calling, they do a thing that sort of sounds like help. It goes, help. So between those two things, if you have a flock of these birds up in your trees, if, you know, it could be pretty loud. And so some, of the, some people don't totally love them. But yeah, they can be found wild in California. Um, so let's go to the map. So this is where they, um, the East Indian peacock originated, was in Southeast Asia in India, which is um, right here, the yellow portion. And um, then they were obviously domesticated. Do you guys know what domesticated is? Like tamed? Yeah. So I highlighted that bold word, domesticated. It's having lived with or been influenced by each other for generations. So by humans, um, the peacocks and the humans have lived together for generations. So they've become accustomed or they've gotten used to one another. So they're no longer as um, fearful. And it can even change some of their behaviors. So um, I believe the Congo pea peafowl is uh, endangered now. So we can look that one up too. And then I told you about the Southeast Asian green-necked peacock, which is also stunning. Um, let's see. So the way that the, the families are structured is the peafowl, peafowl is what you call the actual um, birds. The peacocks are the males and the peahens are the females and pea chicks are the babies. So if you have a family of pea hens or um, a bevy, it would include one peacock, several pea hens, which are the females, and then a few probably pea chicks. So the male bird usually has more than one mate and he doesn't stick around. He is not one that caretakes and is like a penguin where he sits on the eggs or anything like that. He doesn't tend to the chicks. The pea hens do most of the training and they do um, a lot of the teaching. So the peacocks are a little bit more independent. Um, so the harem is what you would call if the several hens that hang out with the peacock and a party is made up of several different families. So that's more like a community and um, pea hens, they nest on the ground because they're a heavy bodied bird. It's really hard for them to stay up in a nest. Um, 
then, and they want to blend into the ground. So the bottom picture here is a pea hen. You see how she's more gray and not as vivid as the peacock? Yeah. So that's because she needs to blend into the bushes and the dirt and the surroundings to keep her safe and also keep the pea chicks safe. So when they hatch, they'll, they'll be more um, inconspicuous. So they have a drab gray colored feather. And the rest of the parties, they like to roost high up in the trees, safe from predators. And I have a video at the end of the presentation you guys can watch. It's uh, an animal sanctuary and they're out in the wild and it's pretty amazing. So the peacocks, um, do you have a question, Samantha? Yeah. What? So like, how, how are peacocks born? Peacocks are born just like chickens. They're born from an egg and okay. the mama sits on the eggs. She, incubate, she incubates the eggs for 28 days, which is almost a month. And they stay warm. And then when they're ready, they crack open the egg from the inside. The hen doesn't do it, the, the pea chick does it. And then they come out of the shell and ruffle their feathers and dry off and they start to eat the same day. It's pretty incredible how fast that can happen. The pea, the pea chicks will look like this picture on the bottom. See the little gray chick? Yeah. And they look the same until they're about a year old. And then once they are about a year, you'll start to see that their tail coverings will start growing in, which are the big fan feathers. And um, the tail feathers on all the pea fowl are the same, but the peacocks grow the tail coverings, which are what we typically think of as the tail. And those tail coverings that have the eye spots, those fall out after the summertime. So after the um, summer when they've uh, mated and springtime has come and the babies are born, the peacock will get ready for a new set of tail coverings and through the winter, he'll lose all of those tail coverings and then grow a whole new set for the next spring. Isn't that incredible? Yep. It's pretty incredible to me. So let's go into the next one. I'll show you some of the, um, pe the peacock feathers. So the adult males grow that long, really distinctive train of feathers when they're about two years old. And both the males and the females have grayish brown body feathers and they can have blue or green neck feathers but the females will not grow the display train. The peacock's train is a covering to the actual tail feathers and they fall out each summer, like I mentioned. So in this bottom picture, can you see how the, the fan of tail covering is up? And then there's like the um, brown and the gray feathers that are shorter that are now visible. Those are their actual tail feathers. And interestingly, when Peace has been coming out each day um, in the last couple of weeks to do his fan dance, he will fan all the way out and then he'll start to vibrate and the vibration actually sends out a really deep sound. And that's the sound that the female pea hens are looking for. So the stronger and deeper that vibrational sound, the more attractive it is because the pea hens know that those long tail coverings are really magnificent. So they want to choose that male because he's a very uh, strong, and beautiful birds. So genetically, they're gonna always wanna go for the best one, right? The survival of the, of the fittest and the best. So that's how she's kind of signaled when he's doing his dance, is the vibration of the tail feathers. So during the courtship, see this top picture, he's displaying that train of feathers. He shivers to make it attractive to the females. Um, and whoops. The studies show that peahens actually prefer mates that have a large number of those eye spots on their, on their um, tail coverings. So that's an interesting fact. The more spots he has, the better. It's almost like I, all eyes are on me, right? <laughs> so the peahens will lay six to 12 brownish eggs anywhere from April to September in a nest that she scratches out and lines with grass. So that'll be on the ground. And then she'll sit on the eggs for 28 days. And the pea chicks are born weighing about three ounces. So you can see the little tiny picture up here on the right. Isn't that adorable? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so cute. You know, aren't they a cutie? Like just adorable. Fully feathered, they're born fully feathered and they can fly in just a couple of weeks. And they have to learn to fly soon to stay with their mothers who need to roost in the trees to stay safe from predators. So it's really imperative that they start to learn and watch mama and get up in the trees as fast as possible. Um, and I told you that the pea chicks are taught how to eat and how to make all their sounds from the mama, the pea hen. 
And under one year, the pea fowl are called pea chicks. And then after that, they are distinguished by either being a male, which is a peacock, or a female, which is a pea hen. So I thought this was really interesting. Birds have such a specialized um, digestive system. Um, unlike us, they have this thing called a crop, which is down in the front of their chest, um, above their breastbone. And the crop is this interesting little um, sack that kind of holds the food. So when chickens or any of these types of birds, pheasants or peacocks or um, quail, they're out foraging around, they're constantly pecking and scratching at the dirt and they're gathering their bugs and they're putting worms in their, in their mouth. And then you're thinking, wow, they're constantly eating, right? And then what they're doing is they're holding all that food in this little pouch called the crop. And then little by little, over the next two to three hours, the crop contents will start to go down into what is called the, proven proventri the proventriculus, which is a space that's before the gizzard where the digestion actually happens. So the proventriculus will release um, HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, similar to our digestion, which is an acidic uh, chemical which breaks down the food. And then after that sort of pre-digestion happens with the chemical breakdown, then the food will move into the gizzard. And the gizzard is an area where little teeny tiny stones or pieces of sand or granite that the birds have picked up throughout the day will help them to grind and churn up the food that was a little bit more pre-digested by the HCL. And so they have a chemical digestion first and then a physical digestion second. And I thought to myself, what happens to all the stones, you know, that they're eating, that they need? Do they just poof them out? How does that work? Does it go through their intestinal tract and it just gets pooped out like everything else? And they actually, sometimes the birds will actually um, kind of cough up or regurgitate these little things called pellets. And it's all the solids that they can't uh, digest. So if they had um, like an exoskeleton from a bug that they couldn't digest or bones or something that, that, that was just too solid for them, it'll stay in their digestive tract. And then at some point when it's full, this little pellet will get regurgitated out. So they expel it out of their body. Super interesting. They're, they're amazing. So um, once the food's sufficiently broken down, it moves into the uh, gizzard. And then from the gizzard, the digestive enzymes are going to be broken down from the liver and then your small intestine will be able to take up the nutrients. So in the small intestine, you're going to have your, um, in your protein, your carbohydrates, your enzymes, your vitamins. Those are all going to be absorbed in that space of your small intestine or the bird's small intestine, similar to ours. And then once it goes down into the um, cica, where you see the three-pronged area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then that last portion is where the large intestine is, and that's where the water is taken out, and um, uh, the waste is then expelled out the cloaca. So you have this really, it's somewhat similar to us in the, in the lower portion of the digestion, but the upper portion with the crop and the gizzard um, is really uh, specialized to birds. So I thought that was really interesting. Max, you want to come in and say hi? What do you, what do you hear? Come here. Come and say hi. This is Max. Aww. What kind of dog is he? He's a cattle dog, an Australian cattle dog. Come here. Come here. He hears you guys. So he's like, what's going on? It's okay. It's okay. They're really smart. He can, he can hear you guys on the computer. So, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. All that going on. Um, so, yeah. And then I put down there for fur bones and other materials that can't pass through the intestine. They come out in a little ball of material called a pellet. So what do peacocks eat? What do you guys think they eat? Um, like... Without looking at the picture. <laughs> Give it a guess. What do you think, Samantha? Do they eat like worms? Because like they are birds. Yes, they love worms. They're high, high in protein. One of the funnest things for me to do in the, in the afternoon to get the girls to go okay. in back into the hen house is we give them mealworms, little dried mealworms. And it's like, mm -hmm. they get so happy. They come like, running. Is it, is, it, is it like candy to them? 
it's not like candy. It's really high in protein. And so they, they really are um, excited by that. They eat a lot of um, grains, but a high protein source is like, I guess you could equate it to the excitement that we feel when we have candy, but they just love it. They come running. They just think it's the best thing. It's almost like popcorn because they're little dried mealworms and they will find them and completely clean the whole hen house. Not one is left over. So it's pretty incredible. And our ranch manager's um, wife, Dahlia, she told me that that's how she got them all to come in. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how she was getting all the hens to get back in the hen house. I'm here. I'm trying to herd them in one day and they're kind of running all over the place. And she said, no, 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 you just have to shake the bag and they all come running and it's the cutest thing. So that's my secret weapon now. <laughs> yeah. So the peacocks, they want probably even a larger source of protein. So they're going to go for in the wild, they would eat things like reptiles, small um, snakes, lizards, um, insects, bugs, uh, grubs that they would find in under plants and things like that, that they would dig up. And um, so they do need a, a large source of protein every day. And, um, but they are foraging on berries and flower petals and greens, just like a chicken would and loving all of that. Um, so they're omnivores, pea fowl, which means that they eat both plants and animals. Um, if they're penned up and not able to be out foraging, you need to feed them a high protein crumble or pellet. And you also need to feed them a supplement of grit, which is what I was telling you guys about with the granite or the small rocks. You can buy that in a big bag for just a few dollars and they will free eat it when they need it. So uh, um, when the birds know that they need that, they'll just go over and peck some. So you don't want to add it to the whole flock uh, feed, but you want to have it separate so they can have that um, if, when they need it. And that helps them to churn up their stomach contents. And for um, treats for adult peacocks, you could feed them hard boiled eggs, watermelon, squash, tomatoes, any of the greens, um, crickets. Some people say wet cat food or wet dog food. Um, pasta, rice, raspberries, blueberries, peas, bread, but you wanna moisten it so it doesn't get stuck in their throat. And even cooked meats, but not raw. So again, anything with high protein source, preferably natural, you know, no processed things. You wouldn't want to, I don't know, bust out a lasagna and go give them that, you know, but you could give them some oatmeal or rice or something that is clean. Um, and then I just put the um, digestive system again, and then also an anatomy chart. So if you wanted to look at the parts of the peacock. Um, the crown, for instance, is always a big draw. People are always amazed at the crown of feathers that they have and their interesting um, eyes. They have that white feathering all around their eyes. And um, the saddle, the saddle is the part of feathers that is a little bit more brown and triangular, um, actually diamond shaped. And then the different sets of wings and the flight feathers. So peace, our peacock, he doesn't have his flight feathers trimmed. Some people, they trim their, either their chicken um, flight feathers or their peacocks to keep them from being able to fly. But um, because we would always want peace to be able to get away from a predator if and when that were to happen, um, he doesn't have his flight feathers trimmed. So sometimes it can be a problem because he'll go, he hasn't done it recently, but I've heard that he's done that in the past where he'll go up on top of the next door neighbor's roof. And so Leo, our ranch manager, has to go up there and get him with the extension ladder because he naturally wants to be high up, um, you know, roosting somewhere. In his hen house with all the chickens, we have 16 chickens and one rooster. And he always tends to go in the hen house when all the hens have gone out because I think he likes to just lie down in the shavings and relax. And then when I come in, he'll sometimes go up on the top roost and all of his train feathers will hang down. Like today when it was raining, he was up there fanning them out and kind of blow drying them and getting them to dry off again. And he's just amazing. He takes, he's a really sweet boy. I've heard from some people that they can be um, not very friendly, but Chase is really friendly and, and quite docile. If you just walk toward him with another person, you can actually pick him up quite easily. And then he squirms for a little bit, but he settles right down. And I think he's, he's just a great example of, being being peaceful and the kids love to be able to pet him he's so magnificent it's so amazing to be able to pet his feathers and feel how soft he is he's just incredible so that's the anatomy and let's see another beautiful picture i thought this looked a lot like peace 
<laughs> with the little crown feathers. The saddle feathers are the ones that are right below the neck that are kind of brown and white. And so these are some other examples of the types of um, peacocks in the world. The most popular, I should say. They're actually, I think, about six or seven, but these are the three most popular. So as you can see, they have different variations of the green. And then some of them that have been inbred, they tend to have white and blue necks, and there's a whole lot of those. So it's just, I think, where the, where the ranches or the breeding has happened and what sources they've had. But in the wild, I think um, the Indian peacock tends to stay with the emerald and the, Kong, um, the green peacock has the emerald green. Did I say that right? The blue is the um, Indian peacock. So here we have a couple of crafts for you guys. Um, I can, if this doesn't come through to you, I'm gonna email this to you guys um, because I'm not sure how I would send this back to you unless you wanna take a picture of this. I'll, I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to ask one of my um, associates to help me with this. So I have a craft for you guys to do, a paper craft, and then the peacock vocal call. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I'm going to have to do me a favor, you guys. If you would, would you email me directly at jessica at bigheartranch.org? And then I'll have your email and I'll send you these links. I think that would be easiest. Okay. Can you remember to do that, Samantha? Um, have your mom email me and I will send you the information. Okay. Okay. And then I wanted to also um, send you guys this thing on birds and mental health, which I thought was really fascinating in this time when we're kind of all a little bit um, stressed more than normal, I think. It just highlights some of the um, beneficial mental aspects that birds can give us. Nature um, and watching birds. Yeah, just, you, can, you can talk to her. I mean, like, Hi, Kara. Hi. Hi, I just was trying to figure out how to send these and I, if you could just email me, I will send them to you directly. Is it, let me, sorry, let me take a look. Is it, oh. It's like links from my presentation. Oh yeah, should I, you just want my email? Um, well, just so I can remind myself to send these to you guys. Yeah, do you want me just to text it to you or? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll send these um, crafts for you to do. Hopefully they'll come through, okay. Yes. So do you guys have any questions? What's been happening? Nothing much. <laughs> what are, are you guys taking the time to, to learn anything new? Like I know we all have all this time. Are you are you taking advantage of the time? In some ways. <laughs> In some ways? Like uh, I don't know, learning a new skill or cooking something that you haven't done before or like revisiting um, a hobby that you used to do. My younger son has taken up, um, what's it called? The bracelets that you make? Rainbow loom. Rainbow loom. But he and his friend are doing these incredibly complicated bands that are just unbelievable. And so he had done this like probably four years ago. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll send these to our cousins. They're younger and they'll, they'll want to play with the rainbow looms. And then all of a sudden there's this new revived crazy complicated banding yeah, that's going me and on. My friends used to do that like all the time, but yeah. I don't think we have any more. I don't think we have any more rainbow uh, bands. bands. Yeah. So I just got some on Amazon and they have just been going crazy. There's some really complicated, fabulous looking ones. I think they're pretty cool. So maybe you could revisit something like that or yeah. you know, I was thinking of even like taking up watercolor. You know, everybody says, oh, I don't have any time. I don't have a lot of time. And now all we have is a lot of time. So maybe think about taking, you know, the time and learning something new that you kind of have always wanted to do. How about you, Samantha? So like me, me and my dad and my sister, we made bread. You did? Mm -hmm. What kind of bread? Artisan bread. Oh my goodness. Like a sourdough? Um, like kind of like. It wasn't a sourdough. I think uh -huh. it was just called like artisan bread. Okay. So was it complicated or how did you do? Um, it was, it was actually like really, really easy and it, it turned out like so good. So good. Did you do make a dipping sauce or something to go with it? No, we just, we just, we just made it. Oh, that's fabulous. What a great skill. Landon, my younger son loves to cook. 
There's a kit that you can get. It's called um, Radish Kids. Have you heard of it? No. And so they, they send you a box. It doesn't have any food, but it's a laminated, really simple, easy to read with pictures. Um, each month there's like four different types of things that you can make, usually a dessert, an entree, a snack, and sometimes Ooh. like a breakfast thing. And oh. seriously, you guys, it's so amazing because they're so simple, but they're so good. So I think it'd be a great thing since we all have so much time to learn a culinary skill. Hey, right? Yeah. And usually on the Radish Kids, there's a homeschooling um, link, which kind of goes into the culture. And sometimes it's talking about um, a skill like sauteing or making bread, how to roll the bread out correctly or more easily. So really practical life skills that you can implement. So I love that kit. It's been great. And I, and, and I took all the recipes and categorized them in tiny binders that I got at Staples. And so now Landon has a whole repertoire of things that he can actually independently cook. So it's really, it's a really cool thing if wow. you like to cook or if you like to bake. Yeah. So, and then what's, what else? Uh, online music. Is anybody doing online music or art? Um, what do you like to do, Camille? Um... um yeah, I like to draw, just like do? free drawing. But. Do you ever check out um, arthubforkids.com? I've probably looked at it at some time. I look at different, like, a lot of different art websites. You do? He's like a, a what was he? He was a graphic designer. Um, then he went into the automotive um, sketching, and he worked for Ford, and he sketched, like, the Mustang. And then he left that field and started working from home with his kids. And so he and his kids, they all have made up like screen names and he and his kids will take turns and he will sketch, he'll draw something and then they'll side by side draw with him. And so you can obviously copy whatever he's doing and he will do some fabulous cartoons and stuff. And by the end, you've created your own by just copying and it, just, it gives you a, a way to like accomplish something that you probably would feel overwhelmed trying to do by yourself. So it's a really fun way to do cartooning and different um, art. Uh, not as realistic though, probably more fun. I, I, I do, I do like, I, I'm taking this like chalk pastel course. You are? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And like, so I just, I watch, I watch these videos and this, yep. this lady called Nana does it and she's, she's like, she's, she's pretty good. Uh -huh. And so like, you just have to like follow what she's doing it she just gives you like step-by-step -step instructions on like how to do it and let's, like it's really easy and, is this like, online it's, it's um on the yeah computer? it's on like it's on this you are an artist thing you are an artist i'll have to tell landon about that because he loves to draw he would be on art hub for probably a couple hours in the morning just completely engrossed in it it was <laughs> screen sharing has stopped okay we know that i'm good Okay, what was it called, Samantha? I think it's You Are an Artist. You Are an Artist. I love that. So what else, um, Camille, do you have any pets that you wanna share? Um, I have a dog and a cat. You do? What kind of dog? Um, a German Shepherd lab mix, probably. She was a rescue, so. I love that. We rescued our dogs, too. Good for you. What's her name? Margie. Margie. Well, next time, if you want, bring her on. <laughs> I can just see if she's out there right now. Is she an indoor dog or an outdoor dog? Um, both. More of an outdoor dog, though, just because she's still a puppy and she's very oh, but she's got lots of energy. Oh, yeah, yes. lots of energy. Yes. Yeah. Samantha, do you have any animals at home? No, I want. I want like a dog, or mm -hmm. maybe a cat, or just I want a pet. Yep. Well, there are a lot of work. So when the time is right, you guys will figure that out. Oh, she's so cute. Oh my goodness. Look at her markings. I love that. She is so cute. She's adorable. And she's still a puppy? Yeah. Oh, I love her. Does she know any tricks? Um, she knows high five. Yeah. Good. Did you train her? Um, I think, yeah, I taught her high five. That's awesome. So she'll do it. High five. She doesn't want. She doesn't always want to do it. Oh, yeah. good girl. 
Oh, she did it. Good girl. She's like, Mom, I'm not going to show off for the camera. Are you going to be shy? Oh, she's got sweet markings. You want a what treat? What? Hi, baby. Oh, good oh, girl. Good girl. It's so great. Did you treat? Did you train her with treats? Uh, yeah. You did. That's what we did with Max. If that's their motivation, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys, it's been so fun. Thanks for tuning in. Did you learn a couple of things about peacocks? Yeah. And what galliforms? About? Don't worry, there's no test. Yeah. <laughs> are you, um, Camille, are you with Inspire? Homeschooling? Are you, in, are you homeschooling or are you just home because of I'm the homeschooling. virus? I'm homeschooling. You're homeschooling? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not homeschooled, but I'm just right homeschooling because of the virus, yeah. Yeah. So how's it been with transitioning to online everything? It's actually been pretty easy. Good. Easy. Yeah, it's, it's been too easy. Has it been? Well, like I said, take this time to sort of figure out, you know, now that you have kind of an extra bit of time, like, what do you want to do? Yeah. And use that time to, to cultivate your passion. That's what I feel <laughs> like. Because you never know, this could be a blessing in disguise. Yep. <laughs> so stay, stay calm, you guys. Do a little bird watching. Mm -hmm. Calm yourself when you need to. Remember to get outside for at least five or 10 minutes every day and focus on those deep breaths to calm yourself down. It's a really important and easy tool that we all have in our tool belt. And I don't know if you want to tune in, but um, Big Heart Ranch's founder, Susie, does some practical tips on handling stress. And those are on Mondays on Facebook Live, I believe. So you can check that out or your mom or dad could. Okay. Looking um, forward to seeing you next week. Yep. Any suggestions on what we should we should study? No. <laughs> Out of the farm animals? Are you curious about any particular animal? Maybe horses. Horses? Yeah. If it's raining, I'm hoping to do the, the lesson from the ranch. But today yeah. it was so muddy and it didn't look like it was going to stop raining. So I thought it would be kind of miserable to try and um, set up. And I also wasn't sure how the Wi-Fi was going to work with all the weather. So I really wanted to bring you guys the lesson. So thanks for tuning in from my house. What, Samantha? Thank you. So, like, I was, you said you would, like, show us this video of, like, what sound a peacock makes, like the honk. Yep, I'm going to send that to your mama so that she okay. can look at those links, okay? okay. Thank you for reminding me. Mm -hmm. and Camille, if you want to, can you, can you shoot me an email at jessica at bigheartranch.org, yeah. and I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Thanks for sharing your morning or your afternoon with me. It was so great to meet you. All right. We'll see you next week, you guys. All righty. All righty. Catch you later. Bye. 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 Bye.